you. That word that I for some reason it seems to be an oft misunderstood word. Largely, I will say, due to the practices of those who surely ought to know that. Those who are called the, the mainline churches, springing from their apostate mother, the Roman Catholic court, who have taken up the practice of sprinkling water and calling that baptism. But baptism it is not. Right. On top of that, the kind of take issues by sprinkling water on those who don't even have the capacity to believe. All right. Calling that baptism. But baptism it is not. Right. Well, the word is the Greek is baptizo, and it means to be fully immersed. It means to go down into the water and to be fully covered over with water. And so if you have been sprinkled with water, you have not been fully immersed. Mm -hmm. It defies the very definition of the word. Right? You must be immersed. You must be covered over. You must be submerged. Somebody say submerged. submerged. That is why for baptism we have a pool so that you go down into the pool and the pool God, we live in a day and age when we come to 
means that he will thoroughly purge his precious soul. Some of y'all caught a little bit of this in Bible study. If you there, you don't have any idea where I'm going. Amen. He will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. Now we have to understand that in this agricultural society of ancient Israel, they would take their barley or their wheat, and with the crop would grow what we call the chaff. They would take it to a place called the threshing floor. The threshing floor is a place that is made for separation. The threshing floor is the place where the wheat is separated from the chaff. The threshing floor is a place of a level of violence. At the threshing floor, they take the wheat and the chaff together and they talk them up into the air. Then they take what's called a winnowing fan. And they begin to blow on that thing. Oh. And now you see, the wheat has substance to it. The wheat has weight to it. And so because the wheat has the substance, oh. it fell right back down on the threshing floor where it belongs. And it was gathered into the barn for the harvest. But you see, the chaff, the chaff had no weight. Because it had no substance in it. And so when the time began to blow on it, the chap was blown away. And after they gathered the wheat into the barn, then they go and they sweep up the chap and throw it into the fire to be burned. The question comes to us from that then, are you the wheat? Or are you the chap? Because the Bible says you don't let the wheat and the chaff go together. That means at least one out of every two people in here could be chaff. Why don't you look at your neighbor and ask him, are you the wheat? Y'all look back at your neighbor and say, I'm the wheat.
Yeah. 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 Submerged 
into the very spirit of the living God. Yeah. But let's go back and look at trouble for a moment because I want to point out something else for you. You see, anywhere in the scripture where you see fire, it's prophetic of judgment. Fire speaks of judgment. Fire speaks of judgment. Revelation 20 and 15 says, Anyone not found written in the book of life or cast into the lake of fire. Fire is the judgment of God. Our God is a consuming fire. If you call him into your house, you better make sure you repent it of your sin. Because when he shows up, if you're not right, judgment comes with the Lord. That's why the Bible tells us that if you take the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, amen, in an unworthy manner, many become sick and many sleep. That means many have died because they took the last supper, they took the, the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ, and they took it in an unworthy manner. Uh, you can't approach God outside of the box of holiness, amen. You've got to get your soul ready. You've got to make sure, God, I can have no unrepentant sin in my life. And guess what? I don't know when my is up that means, Lord, every moment of my life, I'm saying, God, forgive me for what I did, or whatever, I, even if well, I don't know what I did, even if I don't think I did it, please let the blood touch me one more time, just in case. So you look around, you see all the people with the red on, amen, that red is that blood, that red says, Lord, cover me, baptize me in your blood, cover me. Amen. Everyone who does not have the appropriate respect for God, everyone who does not have the appropriate approach to God, everyone who does not have the appropriate fear of the Lord, every liar, thief, adulterer, sorcerer, fornicator, amen, cheat, dishonest. will be immersed in fire. Mm. You ever notice that a lake is usually made of water? And it's interesting that the place of his judgment is called a lake, but it's a lake of fire. Yeah. Why did he make it a lake? Because it's the place where he's going to baptize everybody who don't want him. Ah. Hence is the crux of this message to you today. Whoever you are, Wherever you are, all right. whenever you are, he will baptize you. Yes, sir. Everybody who ever lived, everybody who's going to live, he will baptize you. Everybody who has personal contact with Jesus at least one time. Because everybody who ever lived has got to be baptized. The question is, which baptism is for you? But one might have been I coming. The latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh. Now, I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I don't want to be baptized in fire. Yes, but the question is, which one are you taking? Because no matter who you are, he will baptize you. I don't care what you claim. Every Buddhist will be baptized. Uh, every Hindu will be baptized. Every follower of Confucius will be baptized. Every Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopal, Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, Apostolic, uh, whatever you want to call it, everybody, every atheist and agnostic, every garbage man and every mayor, every police officer and every drug dealer, every person will be baptized. Yeah. Will yours be the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Uh, or will yours be the baptism of fire? Yeah. Everybody who does not submit to him will be immersed in fire. Everybody who does not obey him will be immersed in his wrath. Everybody who does not walk out be in his judgment. And I'm like, I want to let you know something. From just a little bit, I know of a little bit of baptism of the Holy Ghost we got now, because what we have now is only a down payment. And I want to let you know, a little bit of Holy Ghost you got now, as wonderful as it is, 
But now, if there's another level to our baptism that goes beyond the one we see now, then I want to let you know there's another level to that baptism of body. Some people feel like, I've heard people say, I think hell is on earth, I'm going to hell now. The hell you're experiencing now is nothing to be compared to the lake that burns the fire and brims down. A searing pain not only of the body, but a pain and excruciation and torture of the mind, of the soul, and of the spirit to relive all of your poor decisions throughout eternity and to be tormented by the thought that you could have been with God on top of being burned in fire forever. Lord, I'm almost done. I just came to say that we don't have time for making excuses for the flesh. Yeah. Psalm said, time is winding up. Time is winding up. Time is running out. We have to make our decision today because we don't know if we're going to live tomorrow. Yes. Because no matter who you are, where you are, what you are, yes. whether it be the Holy Ghost or the fiery judgment of God, oh. He will baptize you. Yes. If you're here today, you. and you know that you are not currently immersed in His presence, you know, Lord, I want to be baptized in your spirit so I don't have to be baptized in fire. I invite you to come. Faith without words is dead. You believe the message and you want the Lord to take a hold of you so you can escape the judgment of God. Yeah. Won't you come?